I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this moment. I'm here with the most beautiful woman in Nigeria, <laughs> and we're about to eat a giant rat. Pretty cool Friday. Welcome to Nigeria. Before we enter Lagos, Africa's biggest city of over 20 million, we're heading deep into the countryside to explore Nigeria's most unique protein, bushmeat. Wild African animals that are hunted or more commonly trapped for the purpose of consumption. Have you ever eaten these? No, I haven't. Bushmeat is fairly common here, but not all bushmeat is the same. This particular animal is high in protein. I think all meat is high in protein. But this particular one is very high in protein. Super protein. In our first two Nigeria episodes, Miss Nigeria and I are taking on this distinct delicacy. We're doing it. Yeah. From clean and orderly bushmeat farms to markets hawking wild animals, some that I never expected to see for sale. But before that, I'm heading to a small local village to see what folks here cook up as part of their everyday diet. Breakfast is here, by the way. Thank you. Esther and her family settled here by the river a few hours from the mega city of Lagos. Folks around here make most of their income through fishing and farming, but selling fish traps is another common side hustle. Esther has a third business that brings in neighbors and brought us here too. It looks stunning and it's a large volume of food. That's about the size of my stomach. They say your stomach is about the size of your fist, you know that? No, I don't. That's your stomach so right I think there. my stomach is smaller. This is even more than your stomach. No. Could you eat this whole thing? I don't think so. That's <laughs> see? Made from corn that's been fermented for three days, pop is a good source of calories and nutrition. Prep is simple. Boil it in water and mix, mix, mix. But pop alone is bland. Folks usually combine it with something else. First of all, we have to add the sugar to the pop. Ruth, my local guide, shows me how to double down on the flavor. Like yeah. This. Oh, you get deep. Yeah. Oh, like you're going. Oh. See that? Real deep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Or a side meal made of beans and red chili peppers. Holy shit. No, I can do it. No, sit down. Sit down. Take a break. Then deep fried until it turns a beautifully crispy shade of golden brown. They call it Akura. Akara. Akara. Yeah, it's nice if you eat it together. These are simple, affordable ingredients, but when prepared the right way, with a bit of work and creativity, it's delicious. And a little more pop. I like it. It kind of coats your mouth. It's so smooth. A little bit sweet from the sugar. Almost sour. They're both good. I love these fritters. Super crunchy, just a little bit of seasoning, not overpowering. Pop and bean cakes are breakfast staples, but in the end, they are just cleverly disguised vegetables. So what about the meat? Well, today is a special day. This is the first process of the goat preparation they kind of singe the hairs off. This is a method I've seen done everywhere. In Papua, when they did a pig. In Vietnam, when they do goat. In Ninbin, they do the same thing. Next, chopped pieces of goat meat are boiled in a soup made with plantains, red chili peppers, and lemongrass. The dish is called goat pepper soup, a recipe anyone around Nigeria will recognize. So right here, she has kind of a chicken bouillon. You know, the goat is a little too goaty. We want it to be a little chickeny too. You want some goat? Ah. Mm. What are these homes made out of? Is it just mud? Is there something else? It's a stick. It's cut in, in the forest. And then the wall is made of mud. How long does it take to build a house like this? Is that long or fast for you? I feel that's long since it's just mud. Yes, you just pass like. These are plantains? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a sticky potato. It's taken on some of that broth. I like that. I'm gonna try the meat now. Mm, I love the meat, it's super juicy. But more than anything, this seasoning combination, especially with all the chilies, super good. Why the peppers? Why is that so popular as a seasoning? Do you have any idea? It is healthy, even more healthy than planting. Mm. It has more nutrients and helps the immune system fight diseases. Mm. And is it only with goat or are people doing this preparation with other animals too? We could have beef pepper soup. We could have pig, even a dog. Wow, wow. Yeah. Have you had the dog one? No, I haven't. Coming up, me and the most beautiful woman in Nigeria are gonna take on this country's most unique bushmeat protein. But first, lunch. Yeah, 
Kashi. Yes. We're doing it. Yes. Welcome to Mama Jane. Do you know Mama Jane personally? I just met her. She does catering. Yes. Maybe she could cater your wedding. I don't, yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> First of all, what is your job title? Me? Well, you said it's all gone. 2019 NBJ World. Silverbird, most beautiful girl in Nigeria. Her name is Yakachi Douglas. Yakachi Douglas. Yakachi Douglas. She will be representing Nigeria at the 69th edition of the Miss World Beauty Pageant. Miss World Africa for 2019 is Nigeria. <laughs> World Africa. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a title. Yeah. So we've actually been planning to come to Nigeria for a while. Oh, really? We became familiar with you because you had kind of a viral moment. Could you tell me about that? What happened? Okay. <laughs> and Miss World 2019. Well, it was down to just a few people. It was down Three, to... Three, right? Yes. And one of them was you. Yes. And who were the other two? Miss Brazil and Miss Jamaica. And then what happened? And then they crowned Miss Jamaica. And then I was so happy because I felt that she deserved it. Mm. I found it quite weird because after it happened, I was like, oh my God, my mom is going to kill me. They're never going to let Nigeria come to Miss World again because I just embarrassed myself. Now, Miss Jamaica won the crown, but her friend and former contestant Miss Nigeria won the internet about her viral reaction. Her reaction is taking social media by storm. Observers say it's a great example of women supporting other women. I hope you saw that video of our queen winning. Our queen. I think what I was trying to show is that you don't really have to be fighting with someone that's fighting for the same goal. Like, and you don't need that one crown to do it. You can do it with or without the crown. And that's exactly what we're trying to teach younger ladies out here. We should work with each other and try and uplift each other as women and as people. And we should know that we can do anything we want to, regardless of whatever title that we have. And here we are yeah. at this restaurant, about to dig into some... Uh, Ewa. Ewa. Yeah, if I'm saying it right. Break it, it down. Is. You're going to be our food expert. Oh, God. And anything you can't figure out, we'll say in voiceover. Okay. Iwa literally means beans. It's prepared in a bean stew, and the sauce comes from this intestine soup. Beans are always a hit in this part of Nigeria, and Mama Jay's is the type of eatery you'll find anywhere along a busy road outside the city. This is actually my favorite food. But oh, it's your favorite food? Yeah. Oh, well, why don't you know what's in it? This is a different culture, if I say. This is like their version of it. Yes. And I taste some animal in there. Uh, there's a picture of a goat on the sign out there. I think that's what we're eating. Maybe not that one exactly. I think that goat just does photo shoots. <laughs> you know that life, though. <laughs> Did you just compare me to a goat? The one that's like a I'm goat. I don't want to shoot no more. Ooh, I just took a bite. It is very rich and very spicy. It really? I want to try it. When you look at it, it looks a little plain, but all this fiery, rich oil, it's lighting my food tube on fire. So we actually eat this with bread. Okay, thank you. It's actually very popular in Nigeria. It's super doughy, I love it. Put some of the bean on the bread. This bread is super delicious. I mean, it's just like doughy and soft. Today, we're on a mission. Let's finish up these beans, all of them, and let's go get some push meat. There's no way I'm finishing these beans. <laughs> Wait, I hope that's not a We have to use that now, sorry. Well, hi there. Okay, here we are. <laughs> okay, thanks for allowing us to come to your piggery and also giant rat farm. You're welcome. At first glance, Argo Park is a farm that looks like most any other farm. But here, the staff lives in close proximity to the animals they care for. They've got hostels, a soccer field, even a place to kick back. But none of that is as special as what we're about to see. Here we are now, surrounded by literally thousands of giant rats. I don't even know what the actual name is. Are they giant rats? Yeah, rats. meat is meat that's been hunted or trapped in Africa's countryside. This includes a huge variety of animals, snakes, lizards, even crocodiles. Then there's this guy, a cane rat. Locally, these are known as grass cutters. Have you ever eaten these? Yes. You have? Yeah. They belong to the rodent family. It's very similar to a porcupine, but without the spines. Around here, it's an absolute treasured delicacy. Are you breeding them here too? Yes. And do you watch them breed? <laughs> a little privacy would be nice. <laughs> you don't need privacy. How expensive is it? How much does it cost? Well, it's whole rat. Well, what? I'm not just going to buy the head or something. <laughs> Should I? Well, not that many people can afford the whole thing. Is it that expensive? So how much does it cost? 10,000. How much is a chicken? A whole chicken? Yeah. 
1,050. So you can buy either one giant cane rat or about nine, ten chickens. Yes. Despite its price, farming grass cutter in Nigeria is not only common, but it's a hype train across the country. So popular that you can find tutorials from local bloggers explaining how to start your own grass cutter farming operation. How long does it take for them to go from a baby to like ready for the dinner table? Two to three years. Two to three years? Yeah. Wow. Raising something for two to three years that's alive for 27 bucks, that's a big commitment. Do you think it costs more to raise it for two years? Well, I don't think they would make a profit then. Yeah, that's right? what I'm thinking. It doesn't cost much because they feed mostly forages, grasses. We only feed them with animal feed once a day. And they love to hold whatever they're eating. They hold it in their hands? Yeah, they hold it in their hands. Is it super cute? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to kill one of these, right? No. Why do people love this so much? This particular animal is high in protein and it's white meat. No cholesterol, no fat. I think all meat is high in protein, no? But this particular one is very high in protein. Super protein. The chopped meat is first boiled with red onion, chicken seasoning, salt, and wild basil. Then they fry it. For the sauce, they grind up a combination of red onion, tomato, and red chili pepper. Put it in hot oil, add chopped red onion, salt, black pepper, and sweet basil leaves. At last, the meat joins the party. What do you think of this cooking preparation? I'm so excited to taste it. It's like, it's calling my name. I'm a little blown away. I thought it would be a little bit more basic preparation. This must be half culinary school and half rat farm <laughs> because... What is this? Was there a tractor behind us? Yeah. Look at this production value. Hey! <laughs> what do you want to start with? Do you see the head looking at you? Yeah, but I, I'm looking for the feet. This is a pretty big chunk. Oh my gosh. I the thigh. Yeah, probably a back thigh. All right, cheers. Wait, wait, is there palm a... wine. Oh, is that what that is? Yes. Oh, it's good. Oh my God, it's really good. It's very sour. Okay, are we ready now? Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. <laughs> my tongue likes it, but my brain is fighting it. Why? Come on, Brian, what are you doing? Um, wow. If you look at the skin, is super thick to try to get through. Not actually tough, just difficult. I just want to get to the meat. Look at this skin. It's like pig skin. Can I take your skin? Yeah, you can have it. You like it. I like it. I like it a lot. It's got like plenty of fat in there, not overly lean, so it's like sticky when you chew into it. Mm -hmm. I can kind of see why people like it. It's a little chickeny, but with a little bit of giant rat kicker at the end. The head. Will you take a bite of the head? I'm trying to get a million views on this video. A million views. And it doesn't bother you that you're eating its head? No. That's where its feelings and stuff were stored, like its memories. That's okay. Memories of its mother are in there. I mean, we're eating the body, we just killed it, so might as well just eat the head. I think that's logical. I follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as a pageant queen, there's many stages of competition. There's, oh, the congeniality one, mm -hmm. where they ask you questions. We're just doing the Q&A round. Nikashi, mm -hmm. as a representative for Nigeria, mm -hmm. and someone who's eaten giant rat more than once, please tell us why more people should eat giant rat. Thank you very much for that question. Over the years, giant rat has been something that made people have more protein in their body. Mm. The meat is clean and it doesn't have any fat. I urge everyone to eat giant rat to grow taller like me. Thank you. That was amazing. You know, I can't help it when I'm so cool. Even though it's farmed, around here, grass cutter is still considered bush meat. But next time, Yakachi and I will witness the real bush meat industry in action. And I can tell you now, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, hey guys, how's it going with that quarantine? More like quarantine, am I right? Mm. If you're anything like me, you're probably stuffing yourself twice a day. Listen, we're gonna get through this. I'm not talking about the apocalypse, I don't know anything about that. I'm talking about this constant stomach stretching that we keep doing, but if we move forward, if we persevere, at the end of the day, we can call ourselves food coma survivors. Buy the shirt. And we're donating 25% of the profits from this campaign to Feed America's COVID-19 Response Fund. 
They are assisting food banks and helping people across America who are in need. So it's a cool shirt. It's a great cause. Thank you guys for the support. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. A huge thank you to Nikashi for joining me for this epic journey here in Legos. You can follow her on her Instagram, as you see here on the screen. That is it for this one, guys. We will see you next time. Peace. All right, this is oh, the first time a co-host has been taller than me. <laughs>